at the Ontario District Championship with Team 4907 Thunderstamps. We have James Marina and Corbin here, and they're going to show off their awesome algae mechanism, some programming, and their uh, elevator. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. So this is not a typical controller. Can you explain a little bit about what this button box is? Yeah, no doubt. So uh, this is our button box for our operator. This is how we kind of uh, toggle our climb, all these buttons of course may correspond to a spot on the reef. Uh, we have our L LS and our RS. Uh, they correspond to each of the load station. So our drive coach would say, hey, we want to we want to cycle from the right load station. So we press RS. And let's say we want to score B. Now our line lights would go up and align ourselves with that what corresponds. And if we want to score L4, it's like L4, L3, L2, or L1. Awesome. Uh, moving on to our robot. Depending on where we're scoring, if we were going to score, let's say, L4, our arm would extend all the way up and use these two sensors down in our wrist right here. And as we're trying to line up, our line lights will align us with the reef. And then since we're not going to be exactly straight on, it will tell our robot to drive left or right, depending on where we need to go. As we're lining up, we have two line lights down here. If we're trying to score on the left reef, we'll use our right line light to line up with the airplane tag, getting our arm centered with the reef. When we go to score in the, when we go to pick up an LG, our um, operator button, if you select that, it'll go to, it knows where it is, so it'll suck out the LG. And then when we go to score in the barge, our, op, our driver toggles it. While we're still staring at the reef, it'll drive back, lifting our arm up, and then scoring in the barge all autonomously. When we go into the load station, we use Pathfinder, to find the best angle around the reef, all still staring at the reef to go to the coral station. And as our human player drops a coral into our robot, it will go down. We have a sensor in our wrist that will tell us that we're loaded and it will send our robot right off at our driver's command. When we go to score on the processor though, it's a little different. We're still looking at the reef, but it's completely autonomous. We'll drive back straight, still looking at the reef and line ourselves with the processor having our arm go extend all the way back, our wrist flipping all the way in like 180 degrees-ish, and dropping our LG right into the processor. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Okay, so this looks like a very complicated arm. Can you kind of explain how it works? Yeah, of course. So this is our multi-purpose arm. It has pretty much every major mechanism that I have in your robot. This is all called the shoulder joint. It's rope driven to reduce the backlash. Uh, the rope that we used was actually a sailboat rope. Uh, it's just stronger, and it's supposed to keep things steady and in place. So it was honestly the best choice that we could have. This is a three-stage telescopic tube. Uh, we made our, this one ourselves. We wanted to buy one, but it was sold out. So we just chose to make one ourselves in our CNC router. So it's all made to keep the weight low, and it should be, um, to be safe for us to drive without tipping over. We actually have uh, the uh, guy wires right here. They're supposed to help with the stabilization, so we can drive at full height uh, without tipping over. We have up here our gripper. Uh, it's where we intake both coral and algae. It has the rollers here along with the sensors. And this is also where we keep our climb. So this is the entire climb mechanism. Um, it's this uh, hook, uh, it hooks onto the cage uh, and then this little thingy uh, comes into the cage and just pulls the entire robot up. So we also have uh, the different stages of the elevator. We use both the shoulder and the actual arm to help us with the angles. So first we have the loading angle. This is the loading angle. This is how we go to the coral station. This is the intake. And then there's L4. 
this is actually our second highest uh, extension. The highest one is the barge, but for safety reasons, we're not able to actually go that high without being on the field, just to help us. And then there's a one, which is actually one that we use uh, our climbers. So we intake the coral uh, and then we just shoot it into our climber. So it goes into the reef. And that's the way that we found that we could actually get L1 to score. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. So not a lot of people use a vacuum for their algae. No, exactly. So we thought about how we can keep our weight low and we thought about doing a vacuum because we know a lot of teams haven't done it before. We have some experience in 2019 doing a vacuum for certain things similar to these balls, just a little bit smaller. Um, so we thought about how can we keep our weight low and still be effective. And the reason we're effective is because we have almost 200 pounds of suction. Um, with this, it's about 11 and a half inches uh, long, like a diameter, and it pulls about two PSI. So it's around 200 pounds of uh, suction here. I'll give you a little demo right now. As you can see, it's not coming off at all, and we're doing a really good job of holding it on. And with all this force, you can't really get it off. So right. I, is that 3D printed? Uh, no, so actually we have an old 3D printed one over here. Well, the reason we didn't want to do 3D printed is because as we were putting the LG in, we realized it was actually just folding over the 3D print. This is a failed 3D print um, because we ended up just reusing the other ones and throwing them out and keeping them in storage as well. So we had a few other ones, but this is one that we kept with us to bring to competition. But we ended up just having it um, roll over because it was too malleable. So we weren't getting a good seal really ever. So we were thinking about what's a way we can solve that problem, right? What are things in our daily life that we know are strong and around the same diameter? And while we were saying that, we looked at one of the five gallon buckets in our barn and we were like, you know what? That would probably work perfectly. We used it to test suction before. Why not cut it in half and right at the bottom and use that. It took us a while to find a blue one to match our colors, but we ended up doing it and now it works great. You could punch this thing and it wouldn't fall apart and it's gonna last till worlds. Um, and we also have this uh, kind of like O-ring around it. You can find this actually on the top of your car windshields as it's uh, used in most car things to protect the windshield when it goes up. Uh, we use this because we first competition, we didn't have anything and the suction worked occasionally, but it wasn't very good. So we tested with kind of a pleather like material, uh, but that was also kind of iffy. And we ended up just doing this rubber uh, and it works great. There's a little rips and tears, but it doesn't affect the suction at all. Again, we have over around 200 pounds of suction. So it works uh, really, really well. And the way we create that suction, if you follow this vacuum tube all the way down, right to the bottom, just like a snake, we made our own uh, blower system. So we looked at shop vacs and one of our mentors dived really into fluid mechanics and thought about how can we make our own. Uh, we ended up having a few iterations of an impeller design. This one is a six inch uh, impeller and it blows and sucks. It's a really good one. Uh, again, custom made completely. We have a custom made three printed uh, finger guard. Uh, so our fingers don't end up getting sliced off, obviously. So we suck the air out of this up here all the way down the vacuum tube. And you might be wondering, where are all our cords for our intake up here? Is it Bluetooth? No, it goes all the way down our vacuum tube, just like uh, a cable chain. It's pretty much a free cable chain that we thought of. And when we thought of it, we had to do it because it was such a simple idea and it works really, really, really well. Um, yeah, other than that, there's not too much else to the vacuum here other than our old vacuum design and this five, the five gallon bucket I find really funny. Uh, but it's pretty creative to have the cords go inside of our tube and have our own custom impeller. We actually had a red line motor on it before because that goes to about 21,000 RPM, uh, but that wasn't good enough. It didn't have enough power as we were having that load. It spun fast enough, but didn't have enough power. So what we ended up doing was crack an X60 to a gear ratio. It's about 3.7 to one, and it spins around just about 15,000 RPM, which gives us that suction and speed that we need to create the suction to have one of the top, one of the top teams in Canada for LG right now. And that has been Team 4907 Thunderstamps and their robot wavelength. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions 
for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest for further details.